Hi, uh, I'm Jeff. I'm Chen. So for our final project, we decided to implement color video on the AVR at Mega 1284p. Uh, we inst instead of just video, we also decided to have like a video game in color. So so you 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 I mean the 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 at Mega isn't fast enough to to encode color on its own, and so you have to uh, put a external external chip on there to actually encode the NTSC color so that you can run television. Right, so we use the uh, AD724 in addition, in addition to our chip to do the color okay. generation. Okay, and uh, just to go to the screen slightly for a minute, there's there's the the color display. And you're, you're using 8-bit uh, 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 color, but you're only encoding right now uh, three. So we three, out, uh, output 8-bits each time. But we only right now we're only feeding three of those bits into the encoder, so okay. we can only have a maximum of eight colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I'm going to explain the game logic. So um, there are five pieces on the game total, as shown here. So uh, also this joystick, if we push it, it can reset the game. Okay. All right. So that's cool. Oh, and there's a randomization function when you press it. So press yes. it again. So let me watch sure. that when you press it. So this is the game now and reset. Okay. So you so you use the downtime to generate a random number. Yes. So okay. the every piece on the board ha will have a random position and a random color, except for the top left corner one. So that's our little J, and the user can control the movement of J using this joystick. Okay, and the idea is to collide with and, and therefore eat the other pieces. Yes. But you only have a certain color you can eat, right? Yes, so right now this J is blue, so I can only eat green pieces like this. And, and now, then you turn green. Yes. So every time this J eats a color, it obtains the color of the piece. Mm -hmm. And green can only eat red, and the red can eat blue. So for example, these two pieces, these two crosses on the board will randomly change color, but they will not change position. And those circles will randomly change position, but not the colors. So now that I eat every single piece on the board, and now I win. <laughs> okay, so reset it again. Mm -hmm. Alright, now play it again so we can see it. Sure, so I'm red, so I can eat blue. Blue. And blue can eat green. Green can eat red. It now the other piece is red and it does not change colors. It only change position. So I lose. So there, there's there, there are some some combinations which are not possible to win. Yes. Uh, but but there's also some strategy here because you it may depend upon the order in which you eat first, eat first right? Mm -hmm. Because you could have a piece that is color changing and you should leave that. Yes. Is that Exactly. So yeah. if the game board is large enough, right, then you can plan your strategy by eating the, the single color ones first. That way you can always win. But because we have so few pieces, uh, occasionally you get combinations where you can't win no matter how you plan it. And, and the size of the board in this case is limited because of the memory of the at Mega, right? You just don't have enough memory to, to, uh, to refresh a full screen. Right, exactly. So you have enough for about a third of a screen? So actually right now we're only using, I think, like half the memory. We could have made it bigger, but if you, there's, because it's a, a, a square grid, right? So it scales exponentially. So you can only make it a little bit bigger than this. Okay, because, because you're, because it's going as the square. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. And, uh, so generating color signals hard. Yes. Th as I think you found, yes, it, there's, a, there's a lot of critical timing, a lot of assembly language necessary, right? Yeah. And uh, and because in video timing is everything, if the assembly language isn't all the same number of opcodes, then you get stretching of pixels and all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> and do you work that out, or you figure out a way to avoid it at least? 
Uh, yeah, cause, because um, it moves so fast, right? If you're off by one line, it'll stretch a little bit, but the human eye can't really tell. So if you're off by like a tiny bit, it's okay, just as long as overall the, the uh, codes are pretty consistent. Okay. All right.